Today I'm going to show you how to use authentication with Firebase and React. Welcome to DevWorld, my name is Sam and today we're going to look at how to integrate authentication in React with Firebase. First let's go to our Firebase dashboard and there we have to enable authentication. Now we have different authentication methods. We're gonna focus just on email and password in this video. I will have a video covering the other ones soon, so make sure to subscribe to not miss that. But what we wanna do is go here and enable email and password. We don't have to enable email link. This is a special sign-in method which is passwordless, so we don't wanna enable that at the moment. And now this authentication method is enabled and we can go to our React app. So if you haven't seen how we got to the point here and if you're just interested in the authentication, you don't have to watch the other videos, so don't worry about that. If you have seen the other videos, what I did to this application now is add the auth folder, add the welcome component. You can see what I also did is refactor the app.js file with the auth provider, the welcome component and the login component coming from the auth folder. So the app now looks like this. This is the welcome component, this is the login component, and of course the auth provider is just something in the back end. But first what we have to do is go to firebase.js where we initialize Firebase and we have to import the Firebase library like this. Now we have access to all the auth methods of Firebase. So what we want to do is create the auth.js file. So what we have here is we import react, use effect and use state, what we're going to use later and then we import Firebase from our Firebase file. What this is we'll cover afterwards. Then here we have some React hooks, so state hooks, which we have the current user and the loading variable. Then let's cover this afterwards as well. Then if there is a loading, then we just want to return a loading user. This looks like this. So if I refresh the page, we can see for a tiny bit loading user. And then we return the auth context with the value of the current user. And then of course we render the children here. So if we wrap the auth provider around our children, they will be rendered as well. And this is pretty standard procedure for something that's called context API from React, which we implemented here. If you don't know the context API, it's like a component you wrap your application around. So you have access to the state in here with a method I'm going to show you afterwards. If you want to know more about the context API, I really encourage you to read the documentation or watch YouTube videos about that. It's a really useful way to implement state in your application. But for this tutorial, it's not really too important that you understand exactly how the context API works. What we're going to focus on is the Firebase implementation methods. So we reference here Firebase, which we imported from the Firebase file, and we're going to append the auth method to it. Then to that, we're going to append an on auth state changed method. So what this does is anytime the auth state changes, so anytime the user logs in or registers or anything like that or logs out as well, it will fire this function. So here we can take in a user as a parameter and then set the current user to this user, which comes from the Firebase auth database. And then of course we set loading to false because initially we set loading to true here. And then this will be wrapped in our use effect hook with the empty dependencies array. So it just fires the first time the component renders. And that's how we get the user in this state, which is in the beginning null. We're going to see how this user object looks like afterwards. And then of course with the create context, we do what I said before, we create the provider, which then wraps our application. So we have access to this current user variable in the context API in the components we choose. So how does the current user object look like? Let's log it to the console. Now we can see we just get back null. And this is because we don't have any user logged in. So this function will return null. So in order to log in a user, we first have to register it. And we do all of that in our login component. So what we do here is we import React and use state from React. We import Firebase from our Firebase file. And we have some React state hooks here with the email and the password we're going to set in our login form. So this is this component. We have a register function, a login function, and a logout function, and a reset input function. And here we have the input email where we set email, 
password where we set the password and then the three buttons to be able to register, log in and to log out. So let's go up here and check out what these functions actually do. First of all, of course, we have to register a user. And we do that if we reference Firebase, append the auth method again. And then we use this very descriptive and easy to understand method from Firebase, which is called create user with email and password. And it takes in email and password as an argument. And then we can append whatever kind of functions we want to happen afterwards. So in our example, reset the input. And if you have any errors, we can catch them with the dot catch method. So let's try that out. If you go here and we set in something like Jim at gmail.com and some super secure password. Now you can see that not only the user has been logged into our application. So here, for example, we can see the email of the user. But if you go to our Firebase console, we can go here to users and we're going to see Jim at gmail.com with its unique user ID. And this user ID will stay the same unless we change it for some kind of reason. But this is as good as the email of the user to be able to reference the user in the application afterwards. So if you go back to our application, we can see what the user object now really looks like. So the user object we reference from here. So we can see different data. What usually interests us is display name, email, if the email is verified, if it's anonymous, maybe the phone number and the photo URL. And then most importantly, the user ID. And how we can implement that is with our welcome component. So because we wrapped our whole app in the auth provider, we get access with this method to whatever you want to export in our context provider. So here, if we import the auth context from our auth file and then use the use context method with the argument of the context and there we can reference whatever value we put in there. And here in this example, we deconstructed the current user. So if you console log that, we can see we get exactly the same object in welcome.js like you get in auth.js. So it's exactly the same object. So what we do in this function is that we reference the current user email. So if we have a current user, we reference the current user and then the email of the current user. And if we don't have a current user, we just return an empty string. And then we return welcome. And if you have a current user, we return the current user email. And of course, if you don't have a current user, we just return an empty string. So how does that look like? Here, because we're already logged in, we get welcome jim at gmail.com. And if we log out, we get the empty string. And here you can see the current user has been set to null. Maybe you ask yourself, what happens if you just put in current user here? Dot email, why do we have the ternary operator here? So let's try that out. And we can see we get an error because they cannot read the property email of null. So we have to check if the current user actually exists before we can reference the email of the current user. So that's why we have to put the ternary operator in here. And now even if you don't have a current user, the application still works. So how did the logout happen? So let's go to our login.js where we already saw how we can register a user. So let's go to logout. And this again is very, very easy, which is to reference Firebase. We append the auth method to it and just simple and easy the sign out method afterwards. And that's already all to it. And it's similarly easy if we just want to log in. So if you have a current user already, like our gym at gmail.com, and we can just append the auth method to Firebase. And then again, very descriptive, sign in with email and password, which takes in email and password as an argument. Then append the dot then function to reset our input. In our example, we could do, of course, anything else we would want to do here. And then the catch method for any errors. So let's try that out in our app. So let's go in here and first try to log in a user that hasn't been created. So sam at gmail.com and then we click login. And now you're going to see we get an error because this user hasn't been registered yet. But if you go here and change that to jim at gmail.com and put in the right password, we can see it works. So welcome jim at gmail.com. We get the current user object here on the console. So and that's how easy it is to work with the authentication of Firebase. And now we can imagine with this variable, we now have the opportunity to see if somebody is logged in and exactly who is logged in as well. 
So now we can add different functionality to our React app with a complete login experience for the user. How to actually implement that and how to restrict access to not logged in user, I will cover that in another video. So make sure to subscribe to not miss that. But for this video, this was pretty much it. Don't forget, you can find the code in the description down below. I hope this video helped as always, and I hope to see you in the next video.